So my mother, she left me at my grandparents' house to start some new adventurous life because to be honest with you guys, she said she doesn't like me. She can't stand me and she never wanted to have me. The problem stems back to when she was so young and she got pregnant with me at a young age and she said she never got to live her life the way she wanted and it's all my fault. Well, I never believed that. So I decided to take that and run with it and I became a doctor. Very successful. And now all these years later, after I haven't seen her, she's crawling back, groveling, and you won't believe what she has to say. Before I start my story, I should give you a warning that it might sound like a tragic one. Well, unfortunately, I'm the protagonist of the story. My mom and dad uh, had me when they were still in college. Because of my mom's sudden pregnancy, she had to drop out. Because of that, she's always used to curse my father, and when I was only three, she yelled at me, saying that because of me, her life is ruined. My father used to feel guilty for her, and later he suggested she resume her studies and assured her that he would take care of me at home. She gets angry and accused him of using her the way he pleased. After that, my dad never opened his mouth regarding this. I would say that my mom has always been relatively childish and has never been financially independent. She was very reliant on her father until she met my dad and became reliant on him. However, just to please her and fulfill her demands, he was devout to his work. He never knew when to rest and he was not academically brilliant enough to get an office job, so he mainly relied on multiple blue-collar jobs. When he was there, he used to show me his love and affection. But my mom, on the other hand, was ignorant towards me. She would stay on calls for hours and even make me live uh, on chips and a biscuit for days. Ugh. She would make plans to go out the whole day and convince her drunken friend to babysit me. One time she left for a daycare and forgot to pick me up. They had to call her late at night to remind her that she has a son who didn't get picked up by the end of the day. My father was unaware of all these things and he used to drive trucks at night. And when he had to go out of state, he would not be home for days. I was like, what, four years old then? I was a sensitive kid. Being sensitive to people who are close to me has always been my weakness. And I've always used to get confused with my mom's behavior. Little did I know that she was cheating behind our back. She was cheating even before she had me. I started having suspicions about it when I was around eight or ten. You know, mainly because my father was sick at the time and she became wild. Because of his excessive workload, he never took care of himself and suffered from kidney failure and a heart attack. By that time, he had collected enough money to send me to college and was quite established. So, it didn't financially press us when the doctor told him that he had to be in bed 24-7. I think my mother thought that she would be able to go out of the house easily to meet her boyfriend. And because of that, she convinced my father that she should start working as well. Even with low qualifications, she said that she got a job, and her work involved traveling a lot. My father tried to oppose to it by saying that I was still a child and he was bedridden, so she should be here at least for a few hours a day, but she didn't care about my father's physical situation, and screamed at him by saying he's trying to prune her with wings uh, her whole life, and she won't let that happen now. My father still suggested finding some work that doesn't require lots of traveling and assured her that he has money to treat him and take care of us. But she opposed this by saying that he's so desperate to keep a maid. Why doesn't he just keep an actual maid with the money instead of her? He didn't have the power to say anything anymore. He was too weak to protest. You know, with my father's gradual decline with the medicine, she became more wild. I was getting hints of these more frequently, but I was still too young to comprehend it. For example, one day my mother picked me up from school. She was waiting for me inside the car and was on a phone call. I got inside the car and sat in the back waiting for my mom to finish, and I couldn't hear much since it was not on speaker. At first I thought she was talking to a colleague because the voice did not sound like my dad. It also seemed like she was uh, talking to a kid, promising to drop her off at school next time. The call lasted another 10 long minutes, and then I heard the guy say, I love you, which shocked me, and I hope I misheard it. My mom seemed tense and glanced at me in the mirror, then ended the call with, I love you too. After hanging up, she claimed it was my father, but I knew it wasn't. Ah, my parents never said I love you to each other, and my dad had been bedridden for two years now, and they usually just argued often about me. 
Even if it was my father, I would recognize his voice. The call was not on speaker, but I heard around that time my father's situation was really bad, and we were mentally preparing ourselves to hear the bad news any day. He wanted to visit a lakeside resort with the family, as it was on his bucket list. He used to deliver things to the resort, and the peaceful environment it had was out of this world. He wanted to take us there for a long time because of the emotional pressure. My mother could not say no. While we were going there, I was sitting beside my mom, and I noticed that my mom was texting someone on the phone with the screen cover open so that dad could not see what she was doing, and he was sitting behind him. I find this kind of odd, but I don't think much of it. Until I started to read the messages that she was sending... She was messaging some guy and having a very, very, ooh, intense conversation. I was too little to understand what this type of conversation is, but now that I think about it, ooh, it's really, really cringy. Unfortunately, just a few days after this visit, my father passes. I was satisfied with the fact that he could at least complete one of his wishes. My mental health had been low after that, but I also tried to control it as much as possible. I was mourning and I was expecting my mom to feel the same, but she was doing a-okay. Little did I know my hellish life would be waiting for me and it was being arranged by my mother herself. After long-term treatment, my father did not have too much money left, but whatever he had, he gave it to me, but my mom took it and said that I was too young to handle money. To be honest, I didn't know how money can impact someone's life, so I gave it to her without stressing about it much. After a few days, all of those suspicions about her were clear when she brought her boyfriend and their daughter home. Shock would have been an understatement for my situation. I felt like my life had turned upside down at that exact moment. The daughter that she had is older than me, and it's the product of her being the mistress of a wealthy businessman. She left them when she got married to my father, but she was cheating behind her backs when she realized my father would not be able to fulfill her needs. So, uh... Even though my mother said that her boyfriend would live in the house, I had not seen him for a long time. He's a businessman and is always going in and out of town. The daughter was just a mini-me of my mother even meaner. My mother warned me that if I wanted to live in the house, I had to listen to them and shut my mouth. Our house only has two bedrooms, and when my stepsister came, she claimed my room. I asked my mother where I would live, and she said that she would try to make the garage livable. I protested and said that I don't need a room. Just let me live in the living room. The garage was completely separated from the house and the door was not strong, so I was too scared to live there. I was 12, so you can understand that the fear was genuine. However, she did not agree to that because her daughter's late-night show-watching spree would be hampered if I loitered around in the living room. I was forced to live in the garage and the renovation she was talking about never happened. I thought that was the worst that could happen in me. In reality, at least I was living there because when my boyfriend came, my life became worse. He thought of me as a freeloader in my own house and treated me like a slave, and I could not even utter a word against him because my mom was not on my side. Things escalated one day when somebody came to the garage after everybody was sleeping and threatened me to run away from the house. Um, and being a scary cat, screaming was the first expression I had. When everybody came to inquire about what happened, he said that he came to find a saw in the garage and I got scared. This happened one more time and I told my mother properly in front of her. Um, but she just went on saying that he was straight. And even if he would never threaten me. After that, I was scared for my life, and thankfully my boyfriend probably got tired of my complaining and gave my mom an ultimatum by saying either she had to choose me or them. Of course, she would choose them because I was nothing to her. I never was. She was only keeping me because if she dropped me off at any of my relatives' houses, they would question her and curse her. However, the ultimatum forced her to drop me off at my grandparents, my late father's house, my grandparents are extremely old and totally rely on house helpers and my aunt. My mother knows very well that they are incapable of raising me, but she was just too blind to build her new family. She dropped me at the doorstep, threw my belongings out of the vehicle, and left without even greeting them. My grandparents welcomed me and raised me after that. My grandparents and aunt were all like my uh, father. They apologized to me, guys. They did. And, well... 
after the apologies were being thrown at me, uh, they just said it was for not checking on me after my dad passed and when I told them everything. However, I found a new life in my grandparents' home. They showered me with love and were more than happy to have me in their lives. I was living like a king compared to the swamp in my mom's house and I appreciate my grandparents for the care and love that they gave me. And I tried to give my best uh, by just being successful in life and taking care of them. I became a doctor and my grandparents were proud of me. They recently passed away after living a full and peaceful life. And I was just glad that I got to play a big part in that. But recently, guys, my aunt tells me that she was in a grocery store and guess what? She says that she actually saw my mother. She cut ties with me a long time ago and I'd always heard that she had left the house we used to live in you know, together to live in another state. And I was sure that she didn't have anyone to visit in the city except me. I was nervous because of that, and just as I thought, after a few days of that, my stepsister showed up at my doorstep. Thankfully, I wasn't there. I was working at a state, and my aunt answered the door. My sister introduced herself and said that she and her mom have serious business with me and want to meet. My aunt wasn't familiar with her face, so I turned her down, saying I don't have any sisters. She was trying to reason with her, but my aunt wasn't buying it. She announced that she would come again, and she left. She informed me about everything over the phone, and now I'm scared to death to go home. But if anything happens, I will be the first to update you guys. Let me know exactly what you would do. Update number one. Hey guys, it's me. I'm here for an update. Guys, my assumption was right. But before I go into it with my update and tell you what happened, I should clear out the confusion that I saw in the comments. The majority of the comments were about my grandparents did not report me after I told them everything when I came to stay with them. Guys, they're old, and none of them were physically capable of going to court for this. Also, I had no way to prove that they were threatening me because I was getting emotionally abused, not physically. Some said that I should have stayed in the house as it was my father's. Guys, I forgot to tell you that we used to live in a rented apartment. And my dad was so desperate to please my mother because of her constant complaints that the house was rented under her name. Some asked why I didn't take the money that my father left me. To be honest, as I told you before, I didn't know the impact of money then and didn't even tell my grandparents about it. Even now, I'm happy where I am and I don't need the money. However, thank you for showing your support and your kind words were helpful in seeing my situation from a positive point of view for once. However, let me move on to the update as I'm frustrated with the situation and beyond angry. It's only been a week and I need your advice. My mom's living with the nearest motel for a few days with her daughter. As my grandparents passed away and gave all their inheritance to me, I'm alone in the house most of the time. See, my aunt comes here sometimes and I also bring friends here occasionally. The property they left me is huge. A two-story stacker and also has a lot of farmland in the countryside. I plan to use it for charitable work. The news of that made it to the newspapers even, and my mom had no idea about the farmland, but probably because of those newspapers, she saw it. She also learned that I'm successful. I'm a doctor now. I was ready for them to show up at any moment and shoot their shot, but they were being sneaky, for God knows why. And when they didn't show up for days, I thought they left. But one day I was working in the kitchen and saw an unfamiliar car parked in the road. Somebody was sitting there, but for hours, the person did not come out. My neighbors are busy people, and they have four children, all of whom are teenagers. Sometimes I catch them sitting in their cars and reading, so they get that alone time. So I thought it was one of them. But the incident happened for a few days straight, and that scared me because it felt like somebody was watching me like an FBI agent. Out of curiosity, I went out to approach the person, and it was none other than my stepsister. Her face changed a lot and I could not recognize her until she introduced. She tells me that my mother has been missing me, which is why she's here. She said my mother is sick and cannot come, so she's living at the motel and wants me to go there. Well, I tell her I have nothing to do with her and I didn't care if she is sick, <laughs> honestly. I told her to go back to where they came from and I made it crystal clear that I want nothing to do with them. So guys, that happened yesterday. I'm curious what happened to her and why she needs me, but I really have nothing to do with her. By the way my stepsister was requesting, it made me feel guilty somehow. I was in a peaceful place and was living my life, but this guilty feeling is killing me. 
which is why I'm here. Did I do right by turning the back? Please give your honest opinion. Update number two. Hey guys, it's me again. So, thank you for giving your opinions about what I did. It's been a few weeks, and I just feel less stressed after reading your comments. Even after getting kicked out of the house, so that she could erase me and my father from her life just to start a quote better life. I was still longing to see her. I knew that I had to live with my grandparents, but I hoped at least she would come to visit me. Whenever I used to miss my father, I used to think about the smiles he had on his face when we were on vacation at the resort. I know she was faking it, but from an outside point of view, it would, uh, you know, look like a perfectly happy family. I always wanted that. I always used to think that she was pregnant with me at a young age, which is why she hated me. But when I saw the daughter who was older than me, it was clear that she hates me just because I was poor. Some people were telling me in the last update that people change over time, and as they age, they realize that they've missed and tried to get back to them. I thought she was older now, and she was here to apologize to me or something, so I was almost enticed to reach out to her and receive the apology. But before I could react to that, she shows up. The day I turned my stepsister down, my mother and stepsister show up outside my door, and the evening, I thought she was sick and couldn't come here. However, the first thing she said upon entering the door was, So, you turned out to be a brat and can't even respond. Well, the sudden accusation makes me angry, but I kept calm and asked, Why are they here? She suddenly changed her tone and said she's visiting this place because she remembered it and got sick. She requested to stay in the house for a few days till she gets better. I tried to say no, but by her acting, I was sold and I allowed it. For two days, they were just living in the house, and I was expecting an apology or something, but it didn't happen. After I gave them permission, my mom seemed a little better, and there was no sign of a sickness. So, on the fourth day, I asked them why they were really here. Well, that time, they answered me all right. Apparently, her boyfriend was, you know, has a wife and children, and my mother was nothing but a mistress to him, which is why he used to live out of state most of the time and occasionally visit. But recently, his business has been going to a loss and he needs to cut down on expenses. So, you know what that means? He decided to throw them out and go back to his family permanently, and they had to leave the house when he sold it, and they're now basically homeless. I told them they couldn't live here and had to find somewhere else. I gave them some time to find a job and move out, and, you know, I might sound rude to you, but to be honest, this is exactly what I wanted to sound like. They still don't apologize to me, and I probably would have considered keeping them longer. But their tone was so demanding, like it was my duty to keep them. So, I gave them an ultimatum. You know, I'm not really ashamed of it if I'm being honest with you. But I'll tell you about it in a bit. Update number three. It's been a few days since my last update, and oh my goodness, I don't know how I fell into their trap. I really thought they were in need and fell for their lies, and it's true that they had nowhere to go. I thought that they only needed me so that I could let them stay. Some of you guys said that I should help them out. So I thought I would let them live in my house for just a few more days. But they had other plans. They refused to leave, and day by day by day, they started acting like we've been living together as a family my whole life. I told my stepsister that she has to find a job and get the heck out of here, but she was making no efforts to do it. So one day, I could not take them anymore and told her that she has one month to take her crap and get it together and get out. But at the moment, their real motive was disclosed. My mother demanded with an angry face that she knew about the farmland and the fortune I had. She said that she saw it in the newspaper that I was about to give everything to charity, but she could not let that happen. So she had to come to my rescue and I told them it's my property and she has nothing to do with it and told them to know their limit. I told them she was lucky that I even let them stay for the time being after all that they've done to me. My mother got all defensive and revealed that as I have a blood connection with her and as her daughter is related to her, that makes me related to her daughter as well. And as she is my sibling, she deserved half of my inheritance. I didn't know what to say at first as I was trying to make sense of everything she was saying because her words were going way above my head. After composing myself, I told her that she was not related to me. I asked her why she ignored my pleas when I was being assaulted by her boyfriend. I said I let them live here from a doctor's point of view as she entered my house by saying that she's sick. And I just told them 
As she was clearly in perfect condition, there's no need to stay here. I gave them one hour to pack up their crap and leave and gave them a warning that if they didn't, I'm calling the cops. My mom became speechless and left. Well, I don't know where they went after that, and I don't want to go and take care of them. I'm too embarrassed to let them into my life again. All they did was break me into pieces. As I can't take care of the farmland, I'd plan to use for donating as that area doesn't have a hospital. There's no way I'll give that to some egoistic jerk. I hope they don't create any obstacles in my donation process. Final update. Hey guys, it's been a month and I have nothing much to update, honestly, but I was just talking about a charity event and I thought you guys would be worried if it went smooth or not. So I came here to inform you about that. My grandfather always wanted to use the farmland for good purposes and he was a charitable person too, which I became a doctor and that's why. He was talking about giving the land away, but he ended up giving it to me before he passed. I think he trusted me with that, and I was determined to fulfill his wishes. To celebrate it, I invited my doctor friends to party. My mother came in and created a scene in front of everyone. She was trying to frame me as a villain. She said my grandfather wanted to share the whole property with both of us, but I cut ties with him so that I could have everything. None of our friends were sold by the story as they knew who they were. Even after getting ignored at the party, she showed up at my house the next day with the same demand. I told them I would call the police and get a restraining order against her. She went after I mentioned the police, and guys, after the donation event was done, she only appeared once to tell me I made a big mistake by giving away the property, and she demanded 40% of the house for her daughter. I had to get a restraining order for her to keep her away. Nowadays, I don't see her. I think about the failure that she did, and, you know, after she left the city. I'm happy that they were not too harmful and that I could peacefully donate my property away. Well, I know what I did might make me look like the villain, but if you read my story, you'll know what kind of monster my mother can be. I was feeling scared that they would come back and harass me again, so for the first time being, my aunt is living with me. Again, thank you for being with me this whole time. Your opinions have been game changers. I'm thankful that I had you guys in my corner to solve this situation. But let me know. Do you think I went too far or did my mom deserve it? Guys, I want to discuss this comment because it got a lot of negative and a lot of positive reviews on it. But let me just read it to you. What your mother did was unacceptable, but I can't help but feel sorry for your stepmother. You still had grandparents, you know, and they were your family, but your sister, she's nothing but a mistress's daughter. The only family she can rely on is your mom, and you know what kind of person your mother is. I feel like she turned out just like your mom, because your mother is only going to like her if she acts like her and stays always in her favor. She had uh, no one to trick her into making the wrong moves, which is why part of me wanted you to give some of the inheritance to her, come on. But I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. She's not your business. And that way, your mom single-handedly destroyed both you and your sister's life. Thankfully, you had your grandparents come to the rescue. So guys, the question is, do you think OP should maybe put herself in her sister's shoes and see exactly, well, if inheritance should be given to her? In my opinion, I think OP should keep all the inheritance to themselves. But hey. Let me know what you think, guys. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate stories like this every single day. I hope to see you guys tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.